Hello, I'm Jared Nelson from the Investing Channel, and welcome to Pros and Cons, the show where we take you through the risks and opportunities behind the trending ideas in the market. One of the most talked about topics these days is bonds. Many are perplexed. Why have bond prices gone up? Last week, the 10-year Treasury yield fetched just 1.36%. Many market strategists who predicted much higher yields this year are now scrambling to explain why their forecasts are off. This turn of events is quite sudden. Just not so long ago, the market fretted about rising rates, because inflation appeared to be steamrolling everything else. Now that worry is dissipating. Could it be that inflation is expected to drop later this year? Maybe. Is it possible that bonds are enjoying a technical bounce? Perhaps. Or are investors buying safe haven assets like bonds in anticipation of some other factors? Factors like weaker than expected economic growth in 2021 or a more volatile market later this year. There are fundamental reasons for this downbeat view. For one, the explosive rise in Delta-related COVID cases is still happening across the world. Even in the UK, cases are above 30,000 per day despite the massive vaccination drive. Many countries are struggling to contain this super-contagious strain, especially in Asia. Look at Indonesia, the world's fourth most populous country in South Asia. Cases there are skyrocketing. Another potential reason why investors are buying bonds is that we are heading into the critical third quarter. This period is always more turbulent for asset prices. Being cautious is not a bad idea. It is worth remembering that U.S. equity markets have been rising for some time now. Animal spirits are running high ever since the introduction of Pfizer's vaccine last November. The S&P 500 index is now aiming for its sixth consecutive monthly upswing. Even in a bull market, this is a pretty stretched record. More recently, key stock indices are pulling away from their long-term trends, trends that are broadly delineated by their 200-day moving averages. Whenever prices stay above these moving averages for some time and then accelerate upwards, you can be sure that some reversionary action will happen later. This is just a basic observation of financial asset prices. A bull market happens in waves and in a zigzag pattern. Accordingly, we are making a case for hedging a stock portfolio in case anything bad happens later this year. But the optimist will point that we are in a roaring bull market. Look at Apple, new all-time highs last week. Look at Amazon a big upside breakout. Look at Microsoft or Google, new highs. These stocks remain popular with institutional investors according to Trackstar IQ, our proprietary search tracking tool. Psychologically, the bulls feel secured. When the asset is in record territory, it means that every investor of the stocks are sitting on profits. They will be in no hurry to sell. And liquidity is plentiful since the Fed is not going to tighten anytime soon. So why is there a need to hedge a portfolio? In fact, the bulls will tell you to buy the dip. Furthermore, the bulls will try to squeeze more returns out of the stock rally by leveraging up. Take this statistic. Margin debt in May topped $850 billion. By July, we wouldn't be surprised to see margin debt reach $1 trillion. Here's the danger point. All this leveraging will work in reverse if the market dips. Even in a bull market, a correction happens quite regularly. Hedging a stock portfolio amidst a powerful rally is always debatable. There are pros and cons. The reversal in bond prices showed us why financial trends do not move in a straight line. So, when stock prices are rising like one, be prepared for some corrective actions later. Of course, we are not asking every investor to short the stock market. It is far too dangerous to do that because the upward momentum is so strong. Perhaps hedging a portion of the portfolio using derivatives like options or futures may be considered. For instance, futures based on VIX index. Some may prefer buying inverse exchange traded funds, funds that rise when the underlying index falls. For example, the ProShares Russell 2000 short tracks the Russell 2000 small cap index inversely. The ETF declines as the index rises. It appears to be developing a base. Another possibility is the Dow inverse ETF, but its current downtrend is still in motion. If investors are not prepared to hedge, perhaps they may consider trimming some long positions on further strength. That's all we have time for this week. To find out more about our Trackstar IQ data, sign up to our free newsletter at investingchannel.com forward slash Trackstar.